Okay, there we go. We are live. And it's generating. Hi, guys. Uh, sorry, 10 minutes late. Again, I was trying to figure this out. I don't know when I am going to figure this out, but I'm going to give you guys a couple of, I guess, moments to stream on in. And then I can... Uh, um start some chit chat once i know you guys are here uh visibility is public so you guys can see this and i'm just gonna make sure i have oh we have 14 people already okay hi leah hi christine hi carol Hi, Tina. Awesome. Thank you for being patient. Um, hopefully, this two camera thing is giving me a little bit of a glitchy problem every now and then. And then I'll sit down to go live. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, this is glitching, that is glitching. And then here and there, you know what? No excuses. Next Sunday, I need to start this at like quarter to two so that we're not sitting here around waiting for me because i value your time obviously and uh i don't want to waste you guys especially it's a sunday you need to be like family and stuff right thanks tina hi andy hi ellen hi joanne hi patty hi becky yes so um i don't know if most of you have heard or if you follow me on instagram uh i've mentioned that we have gone into a lockdown but it's now as of friday it's lockdown times 10. so it's really bad apparently at one point um they mentioned that parks were closed as well so everything is closed like you can't even go outside and be in a group of five people and chat like i normally used to do with my neighbors and uh and then Doug Ford was talking about how the cops or police can stop you and be like, where are you going and where do you live? So that's the kind of lockdown we're in right now. Of course, most police departments were like, no, we're not doing that. That's like a violation of charter of rights. So uh, they've opened up the uh, parks again and uh, it seems to be semi better. But enough about that i think because of the whole lockdown and stuff i said i've been motivated to do the challenge so i've made a post about the challenge and uh the watercolor challenge starting may so i hope you guys will join me it's not going to be every day because i want to give you guys time to sort of um do the actual exercise because i know you have a life as well so i'm probably going to put out about three videos a week um and you'll get all of that through email. So if you haven't signed up for it, definitely sign up for it. And um, because that's how you'll be getting it on a regular basis. You can see the schedule online once I have it posted. Um, and then I will send you guys through email again, suggested list of supplies uh, based on what I have planned for the whole schedule. And then obviously you can use what you have. You don't have to purchase anything new. Uh, this is just for fun. So just for fun, relaxation and growth. So literally you don't have to, you know, overthink this. And um, if you don't have the time to do it like three times a week, that's okay. Again, like no judgment, just try, do your best. And um, let's see how we go from there. I will be doing a group on Facebook as well so that we can all kind of have an area where we can uh, congregate and comment on each other's posts um, and uplift each other. And then also I can see your work. So that would be really nice. So I haven't uh, quite started a link and stuff for that yet. But as soon as I do all of that, you guys will be getting it through email. So please uh, sign up for it. I have posted it in YouTube on the YouTube community here as well. So the link is there. I've sent it out through email. If you got my email this morning, the link is there as well. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. I have not posted it on uh, Instagram as yet, but I will be doing that possibly today after the live. All right. Okay. I think all of that to say, we can now begin, uh, this week, you guys know that we, I did a video on the, uh, hot and cold press paper. 
And I mentioned that I really, really like the cold press versus the hot press for my florals. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, it's a very subjective thing because it's like perfume. Like you can't really, if you don't like it, you don't like it. If it doesn't gel with your chemistry of your skin, then it doesn't gel. So this is strictly an opinionated video, but it's also a fun video to do quick florals because what I plan to do with these guys is actually frame them because I have frames for them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, today we will be, oh. Actually, before we talk about today, Saturdays, I have now decided I'm going to be doing Procreate videos. So mini Procreate videos, uh, for those of you who are interested in that, it feels like I'm starting all over again with something because uh, I know a lot of you are mainly watercolor, but I also do a lot of Procreate stuff. So I wanted to make sure I can put some of that out as well. So bear with me for a while. I think Saturdays are going to be Procreate for a bit until I have gotten a certain groove with that. But Sundays will be regular and so will Thursdays for our watercolor. All right, I'm going to switch my screen so you can see the, um, I just wanna make sure that you can see my massive hand. And uh, let me see if I can get uh, my face on there as well. And then we can start for today. And I'm going to show you exactly all the items that I will be using. Um, give me one second to get all of that in. And I don't think you can see my face, to be very honest, but. Something very weird is happening, as I mentioned earlier, with my technology here. It just seems to be so, I don't know what's going on. You know what? If I can't show my face, guys, I'm sorry. Um, we'll just have to kind of deal with seeing just my hands. And I'm going to make sure that I can see you guys and your comments as we go along. Uh, oh, it's a black screen. Oh, hold on one second. Let me make sure I am able to transition. There we go. My hand that I've been talking about. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to look at the comments really quickly before I uh, begin. Uh, just to see if everyone is seeing uh okay okay awesome okay um some talk about lockdown yes i hope we get vaccine soon i think it'll be better all right okay i think um i'm gonna show you guys exactly what we're gonna do sorry you can't see my face i know i had like i had it going on for me as well all right so for my paper i am going to be using the etcher um sketchbook just like I did from the video. And this is gonna be my Sunday paper going forward. Uh, for my colors, I'm using St. Petersburg White Nights, which is right here. I have my shell by VC Arts. I have my water ready. I'm gonna tell you the colors I'm using. I'm planning to do like quite a bit of like a colorful scenario here. So let me see how this pans out. Um, I'm thinking of doing ranunculus or ranunculi for today maybe with some tulips i don't know let me know in the chat what you guys are thinking um let's see um let me tell you about the colors the color name so i'm using golden as a lighter orange then i have like cadmium red light to kind of offset that i have my medium cadmium lemon uh, I'm not going to use, oh, you know what? Not using medium cadmium lemon. I'm going to mix the lemon, cadmium lemon with some of the, uh, with some of the oranges to get like a nicer color. And then some of the, yeah, some of the oranges to get the medium cadmium because I have so much of it. So I want to make sure that I'm using that. Definitely the carmine, greenish yellow or yellowish green, sorry. Uh, violet because it goes very well with the carmine. And then obviously the green and the raw umber. Um, 
so quite a bit of colors. We might use them all. We might not end up using all of them. And for brushes, I am going to be using for my new brush holder. Uh, let's see. I'm definitely going to keep the Princeton number eight handy. And my paper towel handy. And then also my favorite um, mop brush by Da Vinci. So I think we are good to go with these three. So we can begin. Now, the idea for today is just to do like a cluster of florals and um, trying to keep it light and colorful, light and colorful, right? That, that Those are two very opposite uh, descriptions or adjectives. But uh, let's just go with the flow. These are the colors we're going to be using. We'll have a little bit of white roses or ranunculus in there so i want to have like different colors so like the carmine the lemon the uh, mixture of carmine and lemon to get like a more corally color so we'll have some nice colors with some greens so um as per usual i'm going to be using the number four to do the centers and then we'll be using the number one to smoothen out the centers and get like nicer um softer edges I'll use the number eight as well uh, because if I use the number one, it's pretty big and I don't want these blooms to be massively huge. And uh, yeah, so let's begin. So let's start off with doing a couple of the Carmen pink ones. So I'm going to take some of the Carmen and mix it onto my palette. And using the number four, that's what I'm going to do because the number four is what I'm going to be using to also um lay down the centers of this right so let's just start off with that i think i got i had some water on here so there's a lot of it that has transitioned on and that's okay so i'll leave it that way and then i want to get the centers of these to be slightly darker um so i'm going to get a little bit of the violet and i'm just going to mix some of that at the bottom here because i just want just a tinge of it for the center to be darker than the rest of the petals. And let's mix in a little bit of that Carmen in with the violet to get like a purpley mauve or more of a pinky purple. So it complements this. All right, so we have this. So let's just begin with this and then we can kind of mix more color as we go along. All right, so I'm going to move this over on this end. So we can kind of actually let's not put it on the uh, sheet. I'll move the colors and move this here. All right, so we're going to start off with the center. Um, feel free to find, uh, free, feel free to place your, your flowers where you feel um, they should land. But I'm going to put mine where I feel I should be painting them, I guess. All right, so we're going to start off some over here on this end. And I'm just gonna start by doing the tiny, using just the tip of the brush, using tiny C strokes. And leaving white space in between. And just trying to make them thin lines so that they're not too, so that we have a lot of white space. That's the key to the white space, is making sure that your strokes are thin Right, and now I'm going to go in and take my number eight and just dipping it in some water and taking off most of the water because my pink here is pretty watery to begin with. I'm getting some of the Carmen and I am going to start creating some very loose lays of color, exactly like how we did the center, but we're actually spreading it out more by using the full belly of the brush. And then as I'm going more outer and creating more, I'm just gonna use the tip of it and create some very thin, thin looking lines to kind of layer this flower some more. And again, leaving, the key is to leave a white space in between your petals. And if you can get the whole light to dark transition, that would be perfect. And what I'm going to do is wash off most of the color now. And with just water, I'm just going to loosely 
add a couple of strokes to loosen or smoothen out the edges of the very last layer of petals. And there we go, we have our first one in there. And I'm just gonna go with my number four at this point and just add a couple of strokes of that purple that we have ever so lightly in areas that are damp because I want to see it transition again into the flower so it doesn't look like it's random in the center but then it kind of blends in nicely with the rest. So that's how we're doing our ranunculus. This is the concept. We're just going to be using different colors throughout so keep this in mind as we continue. All right so moving on we're going to do the exact same thing. This time I'm going to try and get maybe a little bit more of the carmine into the purple just to get a slightly different variant for the center and have it um, blend in with all the colors that we have. So let's do another one happening. Um, oh, Liana, don't worry. I'll show you my brush holder. It's I've mentioned it previously um, on Instagram and stuff. It'll bring it up again so you can see that. All right, let's do another one over here. And if you want to give this composition some shape, guys, um, then absolutely give it a shape. Maybe you want to have like greenery happening here, kind of hugging the edge sort of thing. It's entirely up to you. And then I'm going to go back in with this brush and just add a couple of strokes to smoothen out these petals. And the, these ones, maybe I'm just going to do a lot thinner in the strokes compared to what I did with the first one because I'm trying to make this one a lot smaller. So let's see how that pans out. And I'm going back in with that purple and just kind of highlighting a couple of areas so we have like a nice dark light sort of thing happening. I'm just adding a little bit more of that darkness to the centers. So it just pops some more. All right, uh, next we'll do a couple more. Let's do a couple more in a more uh, looser fashion so they don't pop out as much as these. Maybe one like right over here. So I'm just gonna add very like tiny dots almost of this red with leaving that white space in there and then going in with this brush, getting some of the color that we have on there. And I'm just kind of doing my strokes around this very lightly touching some of the center so that the color kind of gets on this brush as I am uh, haphazardly creating these little strokes. Perfect, that's exactly how I wanna, how I wanna leave it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of color on this area here, just to kind of give you that hint of light and dark. And I'm gonna leave that as is. Just like a couple of strokes, leaving some white space in between to kind of indicate more or less detail. Uh, let's see, we've got three of this. Let's get, let's get a little bit more of that violet mixed in with the carmine that we have. And let's do a couple more, uh, but on this end over here now. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing like I did here, but on this end and haphazard kind of center to kind of indicate the center of the floral. Then going in, getting some of that pink and just adding, touching the edge of what we've just laid down and creating very soft edges or petals without giving it too much detail. So just a whole bunch of strokes going all around and leaving it that way. Uh, Ellen, yes, the live will be saved for after and you can definitely view it at a later time. Uh, for those of you who have to rush, yeah, keep that in mind. I have a whole list of uh, the playlist with the Sunday lives for this year. So just adding a little bit more of that purple to the center. Perfect. And I don't want to do any more. So I'm going to actually do one more of the similar style just next to it over here. 
and getting a little bit more of that color for the center. Get some more of the carmine if you want, because right now we're doing this variation of the carmine in the purple. Then going in with this and with just water using your tip, you're just kind of smoothening out the edges. Leaving white space, making sure you're leaving white space. You can slightly kind of touch this floral. Have a nice blend of color if you wish. I think that's nice, especially when this is like a loose style of painting. Perfect. I'm just going to get some of that color mixed on here with the purple onto my palette. I'm just going to get a little bit off to the edges here and there, just so it blends in just exactly like we've been repeating all this time. And then more color in the center because I want the center to be the darkest bit of this floral. Maybe a little bit over here on the side too. All right, great. Um, what else? Let's see. So we've got some of these. Let's mix some of the other colors that we have going on. Um, so I'm washing off my brushes right here. Clancy is asking, can you recommend beginners some student grade brushes and watercolors? Clancy, I do have a couple. If you check my description, I have a whole list of um, supplies. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, I do have some uh, more economical suggestions for you guys if you want to just test it out before delving into the uh, colorful world of watercolor and investing more. Uh, and then just direct message me on Instagram or Facebook if you have more pressing questions. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix some of the lemon and the golden. So I'm going to get some of my lemon and mix it on here. And then I'm going to get some of the golden, mix that with the lemon. And maybe get a little bit more of the lemon on here because I want that softer, almost like a mango, mango color, if that's word, yeah. And for this, we're going to use this for the outer bit and then we'll use the golden for the inner bit so that the golden will be the darker point and then these will be on the outskirts of it. So putting that aside, I'm gonna wash off my brush a little bit, get some of the golden. And then I'm gonna push this down a little bit so you can see better. And uh, now let's do a couple over here. So exactly the same thing. This whole exercise is going to be just as repeating the same thing that we've been doing. So creating little C strokes or comma strokes in the center, then taking your number four, the number eight Princeton or any of your other regular round brushes that you have, getting a little bit of that light color onto your brush and just smoothing it out in a similar fashion that we did the center leaving lots of white space and as we go on the outer bits to create these petals worse we're getting more water so that we get a nice um, transition from light to dark and then finally you can go in with the darkest hue that you have and just add a couple of like strokes to give it that light and shadow effect is what I like to call it. Perfect. And I'll do another one of these just on this scent. But what I'm doing over here is I'm trying something different. So I'm going to add some water in this area and touch some of this 
petal that we've just done and I'm just kind of wetting this area, dampening this area for lack of a better word. And then I am going to take some of the cadmium red light, washing off some of the color from my number four, getting some of the cadmium red light. I am going to create the center for this right here in this damp area that we've done. And you're going to notice that the flare of color is a lot more. So your spacing should be a lot more. And now I'm going to take my number eight with just water on it, but like taking off most of the water, I'm going to use the color that we have here. And I'm going to try and mix this around. And this gives us like a very soft looking floral. Oops. And don't throw your brush. Gives us a very, very soft looking floral. Um, and the thing is, it's setting the base or the background for it. This kind of style involves less white space, but you're giving this layers almost. So now we're going to let this dry a little bit before we go back in with this brush and add additional strokes or actually we can even try it right now because as I'm looking I can see that if we add some strokes this is what it will look like so just like that just kind of adding a couple of strokes and then smoothing it out with the number eight Just like that. All right. So the next thing, uh, we can add some of these also over on this end here. So let's just use that same technique to get that same feel. Or actually, maybe even do that over here on this end first. Yeah, let's just do a very tiny one over here on this end before we move on to that side. So now I'm just literally dabbing this leftover color that we have. And then taking the number four, I'm going to do the center first. So just dabbing, but making sure that I am keeping a lot of space in between. As you can see that the flare of color is slightly, like it kind of goes where the water is. So it depends on how you dab your water down. You may get a flare in a certain manner or it's all dependent on water to color ratio as well. Now I'm taking the number eight and I've just dipped a tiny bit of the, um, this golden color that we mixed with the lemon. And I'm going to add a couple of strokes of this into this area. And now at this point we have, we are just blending colors and getting some interesting looking florals and bright looking florals which seem to be less detailed and more um, loose compared to these initial ones that we did. So I'm going to let this one dry a bit before I go in and add a little more dark um, Uh, strokes to it. And I'm going to go back to this one here and add some of that lemon that we have on the brush and then go in the center and try and darken that up. So you can see now that it's dried off a little bit, the strokes that we're getting it, they do blend in with the water because it is still damp, but you can see that it's sticking, the shape is kind of holding a lot more. So here's another method or way that you could actually create these florals if you don't like too much white space like this. Now the center, we could probably go in with maybe like a darker, a darker hue of the orange, so we'd probably have to mix that with maybe the carmine or something, but we can do that at the at the very end as well. Um, so we've done a couple of these. I want to do some white ones. Uh, let's do 
for the white ones, I want to do the center with a green and then um, just use very light indications of, I guess, a mixture of the green and the yellow. So let's do that. Let's mix some of the color first because, you know, I hate this green. And I hate it. Okay, hate is a strong word. I dislike the green because I like colors. It's bright enough as it is, but I like all these other colors and having a green this bright to, to use as leaves for florals this bright, it's kind of, it fights. So that's why I'm not a huge, huge fan and I kind of always tend to mix it with the raw umber, which I'm very tempted to do right now and I'm going to go for it. Yes, I'm mixing it with raw umber. <laughs> I know, I just can't get myself to use this green. Oh, okay. Mix it up with some of the raw umber and it's kind of muted down the brightness a little bit. And so now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do some of these um, white ones. Let's do them around this area so they kind of blend in. So I'm going to have a tiny one happen right here. And again, using just the tip of my brush, I'm just adding like two or three strokes, right? just using the tip of my brush, leaving white space. And then I'm going to go in with this brush right here. And we need to get some color that is indicated that, you know, those are white. So we can either use the leftover, like orangey color that we have, or we can continue using some of the green uh, and very, very tiny version of the green mixed in with this um, water. So it's like tiny version of green, a lot of water, so that when you're going in and adding this, you can see, you can see a hint of green, but here's how we're going to make it even more prominent, because I bet you right now you guys can't see this as much, uh, but I can see the green. So I'm just doing the exact same thing that we did for the previous florals, kind of going all the way around, touching some of the green in the center, and then go in with your number, um, your number four, and here's where you can kind of add a couple of strokes of the green and then have it blend in, but it kind of looks like the petals, if that makes any sense. Now I'm seeing the green, and I think I should have gone with the yellow. I'll try it for the yellow for the next one. Uh, or maybe I could just do it for this one. Just get some of the yellow in on my number four, uh, number eight. Yeah, I think the yellow would be a better bet. And it has to be extremely light, so we're kind of washing off most of the color and just dabbing with whatever water we have left on this and then we're taking some of the, the yellow and kind of adding a couple of strokes and that's what gives it that flare and that very faint indication that there is there are petals now if you're new to watercolor this might take you a while to kind of figure it out even like even for me I'm, and i'm not that new i think so it takes a couple of tries so this is our first try. Let's try it again and see how it turns out for the next one. I'm just adding some of the yellow orange in the center to kind of mix it up a bit. Uh, can I zoom in on this? Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Uh, How's that? Can you guys see? Is it clear? Let me know if it's clear or not clear. I think it's clear, right? Can't really tell. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit off and I just want to make sure it's not fuzzy and blurry for you guys. Uh, but let me see. I think the best thing to do is to just put my hands out like this and then see if Oh, it is blurry. Okay. So then I cannot do too much of a... There we go. All 
Okay, perfect. Okay. So continuing on with that, we're going to kind of continue and do the uh, green some more. Um, let's do one over on this end. And I think at this point, we're trying to go lighter than what we have up here, because you can see it's like the lemon is a little bit much, in my opinion but I will still mix a little bit of it on the eight before I kind of go in and add some strokes. So the key at this point is to not have the whole area full of water. We're going to leave a lot of white space in between and these little lemony strokes that we're doing need to be less so that the center, so it looks like the shadow of a white petal if that makes any sense so you see how we did um we went in with lighter colors and then we went in with a darker color for this we're literally just using these strokes as the uh, shadow strokes for this floral and then i'm trying to blend in some of that green with the lemon happening here And the and right now you can't see it, but the way we're going to get around this is I'll show you this in a bit. But let's do a couple more of these and then uh, we're going to bump up some greenery and some other florals around it. And that's how it's going to make these white florals pop up or pop out a bit more. Um, let's do one. Let's do one over here. While we still have this whole white and lemony thing going on. So again, I am just using my number eight to create a couple of strokes to indicate these petals. And I'm leaving a lot of white space in between. This is the technique we're doing for white florals at this point. Like these light lemon strokes that we're doing is indicate indication of the, I guess, white petals and shadow for it. So leaving it that way, let's do one. Uh, we've got some here. Let's do one over on this end. And then I'm going to take some of the lemony stroke color with the number eight. And I'm just adding a couple of strokes and leaving it with a lot of white space in between these strokes so that it doesn't look too overpowering. And let's see, we can even do some, this one's a little bit lacking here. So you know what, let's do, let's take some of this, I'm mixing some of the green with that lemony color. I'm just gonna add some of this new color into the center so that it kind of stands out a bit more and mutes down the green that we have. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this green, guys. Gotta tell you, not a huge fan of this green. Um, okay, let's do one over on this end here, I think makes sense. So that it ties in. So again, this one I'm keeping loose and then going in with my number eight and I am doing D strokes. Touching a little bit of that green that we've added and then leaving a lot of white space in between as I add the rest of these strokes. Because the lemon bit is what we're using as a shadow for the floral at this point. Okay, and let's see, I think we can add uh, we'll add some happening over on this end here at the top. So these will be ones that are just kind of popping out and then we'll fill up, I think, with a lot more of the pinky ones over here because I'm very partial to pink. So, but feel free to use whatever colors you like. You want to use the leftover colors as well. Um, yeah, so just like I said, we're going to do one popping up here. And then adding some of the similar strokes using 
using the lemon color that we have and lots of white space in between. And just using the tip of your brush really to lay this down and allowing the green to kind of blend in with the lemon too so that it gives it that loose look and it's not random. Um, next thing is let's do a couple of buds as well. So like some buds that are kind of just floating around. I think that gives it some nice detail. So for buds, I'm just literally going to do it like a leaf, like one arc, second arc, trying to leave some white space in between as well. And then this one, and they always have like some nice flowing kind of stems and they're never straight. So this one can probably be something that kind of twirls downward or something. We'll figure it out. Let's just do the buds first. So there's one. Let's do another one uh, over on this end here at the bottom. I want the buds to be the tallest bit of greenery or floral that you see on. And then let's do a couple over on this end too, kind of like peeking out from in between these flowers, the white ones, and let's get a couple, let's get one over, let's get one more here actually. And I'm really kind of making it bend this way, so they're both bending off in this direction. And then let's maybe just get a third one in here. And I think this is good enough. And in fact, you know, there's nothing stopping us from actually just going ahead and adding stems to it. I was kind of waiting for the stems in case we wanted to add just a couple more florals with the pinks, but I'm just going to use some of that umber green and add in one stem here and then another very loose one over here and then let's do one more over on this end try and get them to be as thin as possible and then if you can get the uh, a darker hue of color onto your stem just between the bud and where the stem attaches that would be great and then maybe closer to the bottom as well just like that perfect and um, let's see so you can see it's kind of ship shaping up quite well let's do one so now at this point I'm going to make sure that I can even Add a couple of extra stems in case we want like some florals to be just outward. Um, so I'm just going to add one over here and this is what gives your composition some shape at this point. So you might decide I want one flower kind of sticking out this way. So you can just kind of go ahead and create that stem for it. Um, I'm mixing some of that lighter green because I can see that it's getting darker. So at this point, we can add just a couple of stems with some leaves, some leaf action happening on there. So say, for instance, if I made this one like a, like a bud and then attach to a stem, and then I'm just going to add a couple of strokes to kind of give it some very loose, thin leaf action happening. And these, I find, like the really thin leaves that kind of enhance, um, sorry, not enhance, that are delicate in uh, nature, like they're not super thick leaves or anything, they kind of enhance the overall look and add it like, sorry, and add like a very dainty kind of look to your whole painting. So I'm just going to add a couple of these around. so that they don't look like they're only in one area. And let's add a couple over here on this end. 
and we can we'll, we'll be giving it more green trust me i just want to make sure that these little tiny details that we do are kind of not lost and while we still have green why not use it at this point just maybe one poking out this way between the florals these are the details sometimes like you can literally get lost into doing them because they're so subjective and it's so about like where you feel it should go and, uh, and this is what really makes the painting eventually uh, i'm gonna add a couple of like green looking strokes in between here as well and this is what's going to kind of enhance these white florals to look like they are florals uh, when you actually give some greenery around them to kind of enhance the shape of the flower so i'm mixing some more of that yellowish green and this umber because this is the colors that i like it gives it a nice balance with all the bright colors that we have going on here and what i'm going to do is add a couple of strokes kind of like a couple of strokes meaning I'm, I'm preparing to create some sort of greenery over here so I'm just doing it in a stroke this way and then I'm just going to add a light stroke to kind of indicate a leaf that's coming downward and then you can do another one over here on this side as well and push all the color towards the edge so it's like from dark to light and then once we have this laid down we've kind of laid down the foundation for um, some leaves so why not just go ahead right into creating your your stem and maybe adding a couple more leaves and these leaves can be um, like regular looking leaves. And we've literally just added them so that they can make these little guys that are super light here pop some more. That's the only reason for them, really. Otherwise, we could have just gotten away with the little thin ones that we have all around. and here's some more and i'm going to add these guys right around these light florals here so that we can see them without giving them too much detail so kind of just like that and then let's do Push this down a little bit. Uh, let's do some over here on this end too, because now at this point you just want to make sure that your you have these these leaves appearing in other areas as well, not just in that one area down there. So I'm adding some there, and you can see that it's slowly evolving. It's slowly happening and coming together. Let's do one over here on this end as well because there's this little guy here and I'm having it go upward and these will be just like three leaves popping and then just one in between this guy and this guy so this is adding some greenery in between the uh, flowers as well kind of break it up and give it some nice darks and lights um, so keep doing that anywhere you see fit. So like, for instance, I'm going to add some greenery over here and maybe even like make it like a stroke to look like a leaf. So it kind of pops up some more in between these florals. Oh, and let's not forget we have this area over here to do. So I'm going to enhance this one by adding a leaf stem right there and then a leaf kind of just at the edge of the flower so 
So I'm leaving white space in between my leaves. Uh, remember adding like another stroke of like a darker hue of green always enhances your leaves. So feel free to do that either while it's damp or you can kind of go in after it's dried up and just add a little bit of detail to the leaves by maybe giving it some veins or just adding like a couple of lines in the leaves themselves. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys, but it, it really does add some nice layering detail to them. So I would definitely suggest doing that. Um, okay, so we've got these and I think now we can just, oh, let's do this one here. Although I like how light that one looks, let's just do it. Um, so I want to make sure that it has a stem. Oh, I need a little more color mixed up for this one. All right, so mix some more color. Here's the stem for this one. And I think this one we can just do like the dinner looking leaves that we had happening all around and leave it nice and light. Um, mixing some more of that green off to the side. And um, just going to survey this really quickly before I wash off the green because I think we've got some here, we've got some here, we should definitely have some over here before we completely wash it off. Um, so I'm adding some to the edge on this one here. So not giving you not talking or giving you a lot of instruction viewing these leaves because I think at this point everyone has has that down packed I think right so use or paint in the leaves how you feel fit to kind of frame it nicely and then I'm just adding a couple of what I feel needs to happen Just like that, and then I'll do one protruding over here. Because I like to give it, I like the edges of my florals to have like some sort of trail happening, like with a lot of white space and almost like a looser version of everything that's in between. So here's me doing that. And then I'm just going to do the very, very edge like that and then because we have it on this side i think it's only fair that we do it on this side too so and plus it would enhance how this uh this bit looks with the Uh, but that's what I was trying to say. So you can see that I'm just making it very loose and like pressing down the belly of my brush onto this and then just trailing off. I want it to be almost like very loosey fading off to the edges kind of leaves. Um, and yeah, you know what, we can we can kind of finish that at the end, but let's finish the final pinky flowers. And then I think you guys can survey the rest and decide where you wanna add, if you wanna add any more. And I'm going to take away the zoom just so you can see more of my, um, of my mixing and stuff, because we're not doing the whites anymore, so we're done. All right, so back getting my palette. We're almost done. We are going to get some of the uh, Carmen because these turned out to be quite purple. So the Carmen we're gonna add, we're gonna make these florals very bright. So they're gonna be very contrasting compared to everything else that we've done so far. So adding some, we're gonna add some right over on this end. 
and I'm just going to do the center. So remember how we did the white ones, we kind of just did the center and then we didn't add, we didn't spread much of the color in between uh, like we did these. We're just going to leave white space and add some dark rings around this or C strokes around this. So I'm just getting some of my purple and like I'm literally mixing between the purple that I have and the Carmen cake that I have. And I want this to be nice and dark and contrasting with a lot of white in between to kind of offset all the lightness that we have going on. So notice how this is all I'm going to do and then I'm not going to be touching that. Um, I will, however, add a little bit of the purple to the center because I want the center to be nice and dark. So maybe just like that and leave it that way. And then going back into my Carmen, I'm going to continue creating some of these kind of florals in, in about these areas here. Like this one over here, I think I'm just going to add a couple of strokes. And then what I want to do is leave that center portion exactly as is. I'm going to add some strokes a little bit further away. And then going in with my number eight, I'm going to smooth out that, this area. But I'm not touching the center, okay? So here we have like another floral, which is like really dark in the center, light on the outside, lots of white space. Um, let's see, we can do a couple of these um, and do one over on this end here in between. Close up this gap and just make it look like it's in between. And I'm going in with this brush, getting a little bit of water and I am going to close up this area. And leaving white space so it looks very fluffy and kind of like in the background. Perfect. Leave it that way. Um, and then we can do a couple. Let's see over here. I'll just do one more here. Exactly like how I said we were doing it. These are going to be the dark ones. So this one's kind of like facing down a bit. And then here's the outer petal ring. And then I'm taking this brush and with just water on it, I am just going to add a couple of these strokes onto it. Close that up. Okay, perfect. And then at this point we have, I think we've got like a good enough um, array of the pinks and whatnot. Um, if you wanna fill up some of the areas with some of the orangey ones, and these will be the opposite effect where it's a lot lighter, we're just gonna add a couple of them here and there. So same, same technique. We're just trying to make them to be smaller and looser. So just almost like floating because you can't see the edge of the petals. And then I'll just do one more with a little bit of the darker orange. over here on this end here. And same thing, we are just smoothening it out.
leaving it loose and almost like leaving it to the person's imagination to see like, yes, this is where the edge is without really telling them that's where it is. Um, okay, so we've got like a good array. I like how this looks. This this almost looks like this is something you could scan and put it onto your like a heading of something or an invitation even. Um, the only thing I would do is fill in with adding more detail for the leaves. Uh, I just want to add a little bit of the carmine to the center of this one here um, and this one. So that's what I'm going to do right now because we did say we're going to do that. So I'm just adding a little bit of that onto that floral. And that's how this one looks. So you've got two, you've got a couple of different techniques that I've shown you here to create these florals. So see which ones you like. I like using all of them together because then it just gives me like a whole different, um, it's nice to get like different variety of effects happening in one painting. Perfect, just like that. I, I'm always tempted to add like a third color into florals that we've created. So you might wanna do this or you might not, it's up to you. But yeah, so just like that. And um, yeah, so at this point, the only thing that's left to do is adding, adding more greenery. So I'm gonna allow you guys to kind of feel free to use your judgment and kind of go ahead and add more greenery, fill up the areas maybe if you want to. Um, I've given you the basics. I want you to kind of take it away from here like I normally do after our lives. And uh, then tag me in your work when you post it on Instagram, guys. Show me what you have done. I'm going to read the uh, chat and also switch to my face because if anyone has any questions or anything, now's the time to ask me um let me just make sh let me see if i can switch to my face first um and then i will read the comments so give me one moment to change that and i'm going to activate this and you can see my face again i think i think that's going to transition okay um it's not transitioning yet oh yes because i didn't hit transition so silly there we go okay uh claudia is asking do you have some tips to create a color palette on flower composition. Claudia, I've actually done quite a few videos on uh, flower composition, so you should definitely check it out. Uh, or just send me a message on Instagram or Facebook and I can help you with the links because I know I have like so many videos out there. Um, but yes, I have done a couple and I walk you through what to kind of keep in mind when you're doing your flower compositions and really and truly the best thing I can say to you is just just sit down pick up the brush pick your favorite colors and just put some paint on the paper and go with the flow and that's typically how I learned and uh, I still don't find like I'm perfect with it um, or even close to my liking so you might never even get there depending on how you are personally but uh like even with this i am itching to sit here and kind of really think about it and add more detail which i will definitely be doing and you guys will see it on my instagram later but um let me see is there another question thanks Annette. glad you like it thanks andy thanks leah so yeah i encourage all of you guys to work on it some more if you feel like you want to uh, have you ever painted thistle, Dahlia? No, I haven't. I I will definitely look it up because Patty is a fan as well. Um, 
Okay, let me know, guys, if you have any other questions. I'm just going to look really, really quickly up to see. Oh, I had someone ask me about cherry blossoms. I know it's cherry blossom season. Just FYI, guys, I think I have a couple of videos out there on cherry blossoms. So definitely check it out. And um, I might even post it on the YouTube community just so you guys can see that. Uh, I don't think anyone has any questions, do they? I'm going all the way. Okay. Glad you guys like this. But again, think about it. You can make this into like a nice heading for an invitation or anything that you're creating. If you want to digitize this, definitely check out the video where I'm talking about how you can scan this and digitize this and maybe create it um, into something that you can print out at home and, you know, put it up. So, yeah. Oh, also, if you guys like this video, please like the video and hit subscribe if you are new to my channel. And uh, send me your work on Instagram. If you are able to tag me in your stories and you're not on private, I would love to share it on my stories, guys. I love receiving and seeing what you guys have done. It's so encouraging to me, so uh, feel free. And if you're not feeling comfortable sharing it in public, DM me the image still. I would love to see it. Um, what else? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I crossed 3,000 subscribers on Instagram. So thank you so much for following me. I love it. I feel like I crossed a milestone. I never ever thought I'd reach 3,000, but this is like big for me. I know it's not a huge number for Instagram, but seriously, guys, work with me here. And uh, we're still doing the 20K subscribers on YouTube before May 30th, which is my birthday. So again, if you guys know people interested in watercolor, they want to join in, please suggest some of my videos. Obviously, it's not, not forcing anyone to subscribe. Subscribe if you feel like there is value in the videos I give. So um, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And um, looking forward to seeing all your work flooding in my DMs or me being tagged. Um, so yeah, we'll chat soon. Oh, um, someone was asking about my brush holder before I go. This is the brush holder that I have right here and it's ceramic and I think this, the top of it is made out of brass and it's stunning. It's made by uh, Alice and I think she is Design Alice Crafts. I'm going to list the link in my description of the video here. So if anyone is interested, you should definitely check her out. Stunning, stunning work. Like it's just gorgeous and it's handmade, just FYI. So uh, I'll put that in there. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Have a lovely, lovely Sunday, guys. And uh, we'll chat soon. Can't wait to uh, dig into next week's, um, I guess, scheduling for the new challenge. So don't forget to sign up for that so you can get all of that uh, in your email. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.